I love this sport so much that I would happily die for it. And it sounds like cheesy and fringy, but I would happily. Well, my morning starts at about 4am to get up and meditate. Meditate for about 10 minutes and go back to sleep for another about two hours. Wake up at six, half six. Then after that, I do a bit of stretching, breathing techniques, get my breakfast, which is porridge with a tablespoon of peanut butter in it and protein powder. Mix that up, eat that with a banana, get a cold shower and then off to training pretty much. MMA is mixed martial arts. It's essentially a, a, a free fighting format, which takes a, a mixture of what we call functional martial arts, martial arts but work, you know, stuff like Western boxing, uh, wrestling, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and uh, molds them all together. Bouts generally take place inside a, a cage, which is where it, it kind of gets its other name, cage fighting from. You know, it's a, a highly skilled, multifaceted kind of sport. Um, there's a lot to it. Yeah, we've been working with Tommy for the past year or something like that now. He's come in as, as a good young prospect, he came with a good record, um, and I found out he'd been, he'd been kind of fighting big guys way above his weight class and doing pretty well with them, so I was impressed with that. I'm impressed with his, his kind of spirit and the effort he puts in in the gym. And he's, he's built up some good skills already, and it, it's up to him how far he wants to go now, really. It'll all be about the hours of hard work that separates him from the rest. The whole fighting I've been doing for about 11 years, started off with boxing at age of six and then until about 13 and then transitioned to MMA and been doing MMA ever since. After I've done this for like years and years and I've made it my career, you're going to have some head trauma, you're going to have like head damage, you're going to have a load of problems with your head. But like me, it doesn't bother me because I love this sport so much that I would happily die for it. And it sounds like cheesy and fringy, but I would happily. He felt unwell for uh, several days, so, so it's very difficult to pinpoint what happened. And when I came back in, we'd actually been in the flat for, you know, several minutes before I realised that his arm was hung out of the bathroom door. And when I went in, he'd, he'd collapsed. You tend to kick in as a father at that point, and you just want to make sure that they okay and still alive because he was slipping in and out of consciousness we got an ambulance across pretty quick and got him down and he had several days in the hospital but we don't really have any answers to that at this stage that's it you know i couldn't speculate on that because there are several theories of why that could be i think mma at the minute is far from perfect in terms of of injuries mma is not the only sport where you can get injured you know people can get injured playing playing rugby, they can get injured playing football, they can get injured, what is it, cheerleading, doing gymnastics, anything. Injuries, I think, are just a part of sport. An issue that's prevalent is the issue of kind of concussions and, and CTE. I think there's, there's a lot of work to be done. It's becoming more commonplace now that, that fighters are requiring brain scans, although that's not across the board. In terms of regulation, and I, and I think that really comes down to where you stand in, in terms of life. You know, how much freedom do you want to be able to do what you want to do and how much do you want to be regulated for your own safety. I think if you ask anyone who's engaging in mixed martial arts, you know, they're consenting adults and, and, in, and in that case for me then, you know, why, why stop them doing what they want to do? You know, if you're, not, if you're not doing mixed martial arts, what else might you be doing? You might be sat around drinking, smoking, whatever else, doing harm to yourself in another way. So it is, it is what it is. What would happen if you could have some sort of condition that stops you from fighting? 
well, if I carry on training and become like a jiu-jitsu practitioner, eventually be a coach maybe of my new gym, but I'm trying to keep a bit unless I get an injury or something to do with my head that will stop me from fighting. But if there is, I always try to look for a way that I can get around to carry on fighting because it is what I really want to do.